So hey, this video is uh, something just a little bit different. Um, I've talked before about how um, as the channel has grown and I'm at this place now where I can I can talk to really interesting people, I, I, wanna, I wanna take advantage of that and talk to some really interesting people. And one of the things that, uh, one of the first ones that I decided to do was with Lance Geiger, the history guy on YouTube. And if you don't follow the history guy, you should. He talks about a lot of really interesting history stuff that you would never have learned in class or anything. He's a great storyteller. I've been following him for a while. He's actually one of these channels that I um, I wasn't even subscribed to, but I just clicked on so many of his videos that YouTube just started feeding me all of them. So I, I got to see them anyway. So I recorded this interview with him and it was great. There's a lot of just, just a lot of meat in this, this interview. There's a lot of cool stuff that we talked about, but um, for some reason I recorded it on zoom, like we're all doing right now and zoom recorded it at like 360 P. I don't know why it gave me such potato quality on this. So I didn't really want to share the whole thing, but I did want to share one little clip, just one little like 10 minute clip where we're talking about some of our favorite stories that we've, uh, talked about over time. So, so that's what this is. I'm just going to share this clip with you guys. And for the rest of it, there's a link down in the description, down to the, the website where you can go and, and listen to the rest of the podcast. Um, if you don't follow the podcast in your favorite podcast venue, um, I encourage you to do that because I, I want to be doing more of these and I would love to hear your thoughts on, uh, you know, other people that I could go talk to. So share that down in the comments. And um, so yeah, go check that out. Enjoy this little snippet. And I want to thank Lance for doing it. Um, I really enjoyed it. And hopefully we'll get to do it again. So here you go. Here's just a little clip of my conversation with Lance Geiger. Well, I would like to know if there's been a topic that you've covered that uh, in your research and in the process of making it just surprised you or changed the way you thought about something um, oh, you know, all the time, really. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, when I'm doing forgotten history, quite often it's me stumbling upon something where I've said, I, I had no idea that happened. And then I, then I go and research it. So, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there's, I have a lot of examples of that, but I mean, one of them is the Speedway one last week, which I really enjoyed making because it was the, the historian there, uh, Donald Davidson at the, at the Indianapolis Museum. He does, he does like radio shows every night. And he's been the track historian since the 1960s. Uh, and so he really knows people that were really involved. It goes all the way. And he's been doing this for, for now 60 years. Uh, and uh, I had no, I'm not a race guy. I'm not a, my mother likes NASCAR. Uh, 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 she, she likes Martin Truex. So we, we, she sends us a note and we say, go faster, Martin. That's, a, that's my entire understanding of racing. Uh, and so that one, it was really interesting to do that sort of primary research. And I really, I had, I, and even though I, the, Indiana used to be part of my uh, my business, I used to go do a lot of business in Indiana. I really had no idea how important the Speedway was to Indiana and Indianapolis, mm -hmm. and and the history of how that you know built that town and how people see it. Uh, and so it was really shocking to me to find out that the, after World War II, they almost turned it into a housing development and what it means to. And so that I mean that is just a regular episode, and it really did change my understanding of the city and the people of that city. And it's something that I, you know, didn't pay a lot of attention to. I, I can't say I was an Indy 500 fan, uh, but I can say I'm very much a fan of the history of the Indianapolis 500. It's amazing. So, I mean, that happens to me quite a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. And some of it is very eye-opening. One of our earlier episodes that my wife wrote was on uh, a, uh, the Los Angeles Chinese massacre uh, and, and stuff, I, events I really, I really had no idea that this yeah. occurred. And I think it surprised people even in Los Angeles that these yeah. events had occurred. Uh, and we run into those quite a lot. So, I mean, history is a compelling story. And if you didn't know the story before, when you get it, it really, it really is compelling. So I, I guess pretty much every episode, very rarely am I writing on something that I already had so much experience in that it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. And you do tend to focus on, like you just said, forgotten history, stuff that, you mm -hmm. know, isn't out there in the, in the mainstream. And, and yeah, you, you mentioned the, the, the uh, what do you call it? The Chinese? The Los Angeles Chinese Massacre. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, it's, that wasn't unique uh, to the U.S. because there were Chinese massacres actually in Canada and, and mm -hmm. in Mexico, and there was quite a lot of anti-Chinese uh, sentiment in Australia at the time, too. And what's going on, I mean, people don't realize this, is at the period of the U.S. Civil War, uh, there was a civil war going on in China that, that, uh, that, that co-occurred, but actually was, was 10 years long. It killed more people than the First World War, uh, the, the mm -hmm. Taiping Rebellion. And so uh, the, China was bleeding, uh, mostly people you would call peasants. They had almost no education. Uh, and they were just trying to get out of China. There was either no employment or there was just death and destruction. Uh, and so that, that, you know, that kind of flooded, uh, you know, the, the Pacific Rim with people that were largely low-skilled labor. Uh, and that started to create a nativist backlash. And uh, that's it's something, you know, we, there was a period when kind of America all agreed, okay, 
we have handled the Native Americans. Uh, we're tolerating that black people are free, though we don't really want to be equal with them. And we've decided that we're just kind of ignore now that we got so many people from Eastern Europe, but we really hate the Chinese. Uh, we, that's, that was this point in, in US history. Uh, and, yeah. and so we passed laws to exclude the Chinese coming to America. And th there were various reasons for it. I mean, part of it was it was more, I mean, uh, you know, the, there's a lot more cultural similarity between someone who immigrated from Germany and someone who Ill immigrated from uh, 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 Ireland than there was between someone who, either of those uh, with someone who had come from China. I mean, language was different and culture was different. Yeah. And it was a kind of an insular culture. They t tended to hang together. And so people saw them as, as different. Uh, and so a piece of violence in Los An early Los Angeles uh, uh, turned into the, the essentially the European population uprising and murdering a whole bunch of Chinese people. I had no idea that it happened. I don't yeah. think a lot of people in Los Angeles had any idea that it happened. And it's, it's kind, I mean, there's a lot of dark points in history that we don't talk much about and that anti-Chinese sentiment taking it to the level where they were literally just burning down the buildings with families inside is something that really surprised people. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't, I mean, I just see, I mean, history is history. I don't see that as a judgment on the nation. I see it as something that occurred in the flow of history, uh, but it was a terrible, terrible thing. And I had no idea that it happened. And, uh, and I think that's one of the first episodes where we started getting a lot of views on that episode. And it shows that, you know, people also didn't know. So all the time we run into things that surprise me and that I didn't know and, and that are just, the story is just, it's shocking. Uh, but it's also like, how could this story not be told? How do we not know this happened? Yeah. Well, especially that that dark stuff that we don't want to think about gets swept under the rug pretty, pretty thoroughly. I mean, some things do too. I mean, one of our most popular episodes was on this guy named Horace Devere Cole, who just pulled pranks uh, in turn of the century London, and he 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 literally pretended he got a bunch of friends together who pretended to be the uh, a diplomatic team from Abyssinia and managed to convince the Royal Navy to take them on a tour of the uh, of the HMS Dreadnought. Uh, and I mean, and he's, he's, he's another one. I mean, so it's a great story that, that yeah. we don't hear about very much that doesn't happen to be, you know, a horrible thing too. So, so you, and all of those events have, have meaning. So it doesn't have to be something, you know, terrifying, but uh, sometimes yeah. those things that are, that are really terrifying that you gosh, you know, you can see why people don't want to talk about that mm -hmm. uh, just because it's so terrible, but you can see why it's important that we do. And that's, I mean, that's the fun of what I'm doing. So you, you've you got a little different focus on your channel but i imagine you run into things all the time that are like wow this is really interesting people should know this and and that's yeah. fun that's cool and we're bringing that to people well the, the one that i'm specifically thinking of that i did was um not that long ago well time doesn't mean anything anymore i don't know when this was but i guess it was <laughs> earlier this year um but it was on airships uh -huh. zeppelins and blimps and the whole, the whole history there and uh it's one of my favorite ones that I've done recently anyway, because like in the process of making, it, I was like, this is so cool. I, I'd never really thought about how cool it would have been to have like been on a, on a, on a Zeppelin well, going across the Atlantic. On the, you know? on the wrong trip, but uh, yeah, it would have been cool. I live uh, near Scott Air Force Base about a couple of miles away from here. It was built as a Zeppelin base. And, right. and, and uh, it's, it's amazing when you see, if you're just outside of Houston, you can see there's these two really, really tall towers that make no sense. You're like, what are those things? Well, they're actually the leftover doors from an airship hangar, uh, from an Army Air Force, Air Force airship hangar. And when you get the idea of the scale of that, you're like, yeah. what must that have been like? Yeah, yeah so I've done, I've done airships too. And some, I did the Shenandoah, which, which uh, crashed in Ohio and, and you know, killed the crew, or uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, I think it was called the I'm gonna probably get this wrong. I think it was called the M8, but there was a there was a, a a smaller airship out of San Francisco that just left with two guys on it and an anti-submarine patrol in the Second World War came back empty, and we never know what happened to these two guys. It's, oh, it's I haven't heard like, that one. Wow, mystery. And and so uh, yeah, it is. It's extraordinary, you know, to think uh, something that would dwarf uh, a, a, a the largest aircraft that you've ever seen, yeah. and people hopped on that thing and they floated across the oceans and they and they you know they bombed. The, during the war, they bombed with the things, and after the war, yeah. they were the thing that we had that would cross the oceans. And yeah, they're extraordinary, uh, and turned out to be pretty darn dangerous too. You know. Yeah. They, uh... Well, and I, I in in the process of you know researching it and putting the script together, I started putting myself in the shoes of somebody in the early 1900s or even late 1800s, whatever, where. Um, they never seen anything floating in the sky before. You know, yeah. we, we see airplanes all the time now and don't think anything of it, but like they've never seen anything before. And suddenly there's these giant freaking yeah. metal whales like just yeah, floating around. Yeah, they're just floating over, yeah. I mean, I, I can't imagine how impactful that, that was and how, how um, 
how much that like affected the culture and stuff. You and know? it was extraordinary technology for its day. Yeah. I mean, now we almost think of them as like vintage, but I mean, imagine how high tech that appeared. It's that's like a spaceship, you know, how, how could we make totally. that? Yeah. Yeah. No, that, uh, I, I loved that one. I mean, just like every once in a while, I don't know if you ever do that. Every once in a while, I'll go back and just watch that video. It's just like, that was just so cool. <laughs> like I just learned something there. You know, I didn't, I didn't know about that. Yeah. It happens. It happens to me too. And yeah. that's uh, it's it's a, it's this part of the reason the job's fun. Yeah.